of Revelation is about your body. The two witnesses that are spoken of in the book of Revelation are the pineal gland in your brain and the pituitary gland, the master gland in your brain. Did you know that? And that all of the fighting that goes on and all of the, of the different nations and the rivers and the seas all deal with the endocrine system of your body and that which is the upheaval in your body. And God, through revelation in the hidden mysteries of the East, is giving you directions on how you can put all of this together and how you can get your body and your mind in harmony. Isn't that nice? Or, or would we rather have it the way these guys on TV says God and Jesus are sitting up now plotting and planning the nuclear holocaust that they're going to unleash on the world called Armageddon when they kill a third of the people. Do you want to believe that? I don't think so. We've had enough of that nonsense. We've had enough of that literalism. Now we want to join into the new movement of unification of the world's people. Peace to the animals. Peace to the forest. Peace to the seas. Peace to all through Christ and through this new age of love. Isn't it? I mean, isn't that, doesn't that make sense? Or, or must we continue the drug culture and the teenage suicides and the hospitals filled, the jails filled, the insane asylums filled, the violence, the poverty, the stress, the drugs, of all of the things that are part of what we call our Christian country. I tell people in church, for God's sake, stop being a Christian. Be a Christ. Unless you have at least a minimal acquaintance with numerology. Because the Bible was not written by people from Pittsburgh. The Bible was written by the ancient Eastern people and they knew numerology. They dwelled in the, numer the numbers of the zodiac. They dwelled in all various numbers that had meanings. Let me give you a quick rundown so you get an idea what I'm talking about. Hidden meanings. The number one means God, the Logos. The number two means body and soul, you and God. The number three means new life, resurrection, a new beginning. Jesus was in the tomb three days. Jonah was in the whale three days. The number four means your fourfold nature, physical, spiritual, intellectual, emotional. Okay? The number five means mediation. It also means sacrifice. I'm going to show you that a little later. The number six means doctrines, laws, religion. Don't you remember when Jesus turned water into wine? Water can mean on the lower level emotionalism. He turned water into wine. How many jars of water did it say he turned into wine? Six. Six. In other words, he was turning the, the, the religion of the letter into that which is the, the movement and the divine essence of the spirit. That's what it means changing water into wine. Number seven means divine intervention. Joshua walked around Jericho how many times? Seven. And the walls came tumbling down. Seven means divine intervention. There are seven nerve centers, or seven chakras, that rise from the base of the spine to the top, which are the seven levels which a person walks in order to find that which is the pineal or enlightenment. It's all part of the Bible. It's all part of the ancient wisdom which is covered up in numbers. That's why a lot of your religious teachers, and you see them on TV, and they make such a terrible mistake. You know what they do? They go and say, well, there's going to be seven years of tribulation. It doesn't mean that. The number seven means divine intervention. What that means is when tribulation comes to your life, God will intervene on your behalf. It doesn't mean that God is going to send seven years of terror. It means that God will intervene when the struggle comes against you. That's what seven years of, in, uh, uh, of tribulation means. Divine intervention is seven. Number eight means rupture, separation. Number nine means the human consciousness. We're going to talk about that a little bit. Number ten means completion. And the number of perfection in Hebrew is twelve, which corresponds to the ancient, most ancient zodiac. Okay? Let's take a look at the number nine. And I'll show you how you can get all fouled up if you don't understand these numbers. It's just like, you know, you've, you've heard these teachers teaching all the time. It's going to be seven years of tribulation. It doesn't mean that. If God is love, would he send you seven years of hell? Like they say, no, it means he will intercede. Look, look at, look at, look at the number nine. The numerical value to the, num to the word Adam in Hebrew in the ancient scriptures is nine. Everything had a numerical value, and that's why there was such mystery in the ancient scriptures, because they used numbers to deceive people who tried to think intellectually. You know what you're doing? You know what we're doing? We're reading the Bible intellectually in the same way <coughs> as if you and I said, let's go shoot the bull, and then somebody said, oh, they're going out and kill an animal. That's because they read us literally. They didn't read us symbolically. 
we're not going to go out and kill an animal. We're going to have a conversation. I said to your boy, you really spilled the beans. Well, they said, uh, that must be some ritual. They're going to go out and get a broom and sweep up the beans. You don't have to sweep up any beans. It just means you talked out of turn. He shot his mouth off. Pow! No, he didn't. It just means he said something he shouldn't have said. He's off the wall. Where's the wall? No, he's not. It means that he's strange. He's different. And you can think of thousands of symbolic uh, verses that you use, and the Bible is filled with them, and yet you take it literally. That's how stupid we are. That's why, that's why you've got all of this in, in this country, in religion, and fear, and, and in misunderstanding, and in suicides, and all of this violence right in the middle of religion, because religion is teaching you literally what was intended to be taken symbolically. Oh, hey, you know yourself, you've read the story of Abraham and Sarah. She was a hundred years old or something and had a baby, and you're taking this literally. It's not a literal story at all. It's an allegory. How do I know it? Look up Galatians 4.24. The Apostle Paul says the story of Abraham and Sarah, he says, which things are an allegory. It's, it's, it's a symbolic story. If the Bible says it, can't you even really believe that? Galatians 4.24. But let, let's take a look at the number nine. The number nine means Adam. Adam means earth. The earth means your flesh, your mind, your emotions, you, you know, the ego, the macho, the I will do what I think and all this kind of business, okay? So when you use that number nine, it starts to reveal a lot of things to you, okay? If you look in the Bible, you'll see many references to three and a half or 42 months, three and a half years, 42 months. That all comes out to nine. Let me show you how. You'll see it as 42 months, you'll see it as three and a half years, you'll see it as 1,260 days, because three and a half years is six months, okay, is three years and six months, that's 42 months. You take 42 times 30, you get 1,260, okay? Now when you add one, two, and six, you get nine. That's the number of human consciousness. That's the Bible's way of hiding from the literal and the intellectual spiritual, significant, deep mysteries that come out of the times of Egypt and Chaldea. They deliberately did this to hide from the profane people the powers that are in the inner consciousness because they didn't want literal people getting a hold of these mysteries and using them for their own good or to raise money the way these evangelists and TV people do. Okay, this isn't for that. This should not cost you a dime. Let me give you, I'll give you, I'll give you a, a, a symbol. Tithing. How much money are these people made taking 10% out of your pocket? Tithing has nothing whatsoever to do with money. It's symbolic. It's a hidden myth. And what it means is you have 10% of you that is the carnal mind. 10% of you is the left side, it is the negative side, it is the carnal mind. 90% of you is the right hemisphere, which is dormant. God is saying to you, give me that 10%. Give me your ego. Give me your flesh. Give me your will. Through meditation, shut off the thoughts of the mind. You shut off the 10%, which is you. You turn on the right hemisphere, which is the 90%, which is him. You have tithed. Don't give... Well, I'm not going to say, but you shouldn't give anybody 10% of anything. You should give God that 10%, which is you, by shutting off your ego and rising up into a high, beautiful consciousness with God. That's what tithing really means, giving God yourself, the 10%, the negative left side, the carnal, intellectual side. Now, let's look at the number nine. Like I said, we were going to look at the number nine. Three and a half months, three and a half years, 42 months, they all equate to 1,260 days. If you look through the book of Revelation, you'll see all kinds of references to three and a half, 42, 1,260, they all add up to nine. So now when you have that key, that the number nine means human consciousness, you can solve some riddles. You can solve the identity of the beast. Who is the beast? Six, 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 okay? Who is six, six, six? This is the way you have to do it if you understand Eastern mysticism that wrote that. You take 6 plus 6 equals 12 plus 6 equals 18. Now you have 1, 8, 1 plus 8 equals 9. The identity of the beast is you and me, our lower carnal mind. It's the beast that rapes. It's the beast that makes wars. All of these horrible things that you read about every day in your newspaper and see every day on your television and we can look at the beast by going into our bathroom, turning on the light and there's a picture of the beast right over your sink. It is your lower 
mind. It is that part of you that threatens you, that part of you that convinces you you're not going to make it past tomorrow, that part of you that says, well, everything's okay now, but what are you going to do if, and what are you going to say when you meet so-and-so next week, and all of the stuff that keeps you rattling and shaking and all of those things within you going nuts, that's the beast. That's hell. What about those who are saved? What about those who are going to heaven? In Revelation 14, it says 144,000. That means an endless number of saved. But look at the number, 144. 1 plus 4 equals 5 plus 4 equals what? 9. 9 means consciousness. The beast is the lower consciousness. Those who are saved are the higher consciousness, the upper room, the mountain experience, meditation. When you lift yourself up above, you come into being that 144 or consciousness in the higher realm. So 9 then means consciousness, and it shows either on the lower level, which is the devil or hell of the carnal mind, on the higher level, which is the divine mind. There's an interesting way you can see how the Bible specifically shoves this in so you know, it's a tip-off from the ancient people that this is talking about consciousness. Jesus comes down and he's talking to the uh, fellows in the boat. I'm not I'm exactly sure, I don't know if it's in John or where, but Jesus says to the fellows in the boat, look, if you want to catch fish, cast your net over to the right side of the boat, okay? He says, if you want to catch fish, cast your net over to the right side of the boat. What Jesus is talking about is not fish. Fish means wisdom. He's not talking about the right side of the boat. He's talking about directing your energy to the right hemisphere of the mind. You do that by turning off the left side in meditation. Now, how do we know? Now that we know that the number nine means consciousness, how do we know that Jesus is talking about consciousness and not fish? You'll see there in that scripture when Jesus says, cast your net to the right side, you'll see how many fish they caught. They caught 153 fish. Okay? 1 plus 5 plus 3 equals 9. 9 means consciousness. Therefore, Jesus is definitely saying, if you want to be filled with God's wisdom, if you want to be filled with God's understanding, if you want to be filled with God's knowledge of this universe and your place in it, then direct your energies to the right hemisphere. And Jesus told you how to do that, by taking no thought. You must meditate. You must, you must allow your eye to be single. You focus that energy right between your eyes and your forehead, and you focus energy there, and you bring yourself above all of those thoughts which are trying to destroy you. You bring yourself up into the bliss of the heaven which is within you, and then you fill with wisdom, you fill with understanding, and you start to activate the right hemisphere of your brain which has been dormant all of your life. Look, you see the same thing in the sky. You see the same thing in nature. The sun right now, as we're sitting talking, the sun in the northern hemisphere is sitting at the right hand. It is sitting in the eastern sky. And what happens? When it sits in the eastern or it sits in the right hand, it brings to life all that was dormant during the winter. It's symbolic too. Paul says the unseen things of God should be made manifest by the things that you can see. In other words, when the sun in the heavens sits at the right hand of power in the eastern sky in the northern hemisphere, summer comes. Everything which was dormant during the winter is gone. Now there were flowers, now there is color, now there is new life. This is what it means. When the Son of Man, <coughs> the desires of the flesh, the solar plexus is raised to the pineal, the light is at its highest, the power sits at the right hemisphere of the brain, okay? And that then brings to life all that has been dormant in your life during the winter of your soul. Doesn't it make sense? This is what it's about. This is what the hidden meanings of the Bible are about. Everything that is out is in. It is all within you and at your hands to activate it and call it into active participation in your life. Now, and it's never too late. If you're 8 or if you're 98, it doesn't make any difference because once you raise your consciousness above the thoughts of the mind, there is no age. Well, it's uh, time to take a little break here uh, on the hidden meanings and tell you that our phone is open if you'd like to get more information. And boy, there's an awful lot of information to get, isn't there? I'd say, man, I'm telling you. Numerology. Isn't it interesting, um, like when you see uh, how the ancient people used numerology and symbolisms in order to express deep spiritual truths. It's really a fascinating thing. Well, anyhow, if you'd like to call now, 
The telephone is 609-971-0537, and we'll send the information to you. Uh, there's nobody going to talk you into anything or sell you anything. We don't do that. Just to share the message of the new age of Christ and, and the new age of the Bible, to be able to understand the mysteries of the Bible by understanding symbolism. When you can get, you know, it's just like saying, let's go shoot the bull. Well, you're not really going to go shoot a bull. And the Bible speaks the same way. Now, you can, you can wait till the end of the show if you'd like and, uh, you know, call then and we'll get the information to you. But the phone number is 609-971-0537. Well, let's go back and uh, listen to some more, okay? Thanks a lot for being with us. Sacrifice, because it's talking about your five senses. You have five senses. Sight, taste, touch, smell, hearing. Those are the five senses. Those are the five areas of your life which get us into trouble. We either see something, woo, we either say something, bad, we either hear something, gossip, uh, we either chase something, booze or whatever, okay, or we either sense something, smell something. Not too often do we smell something. <clears throat> well, you never know. Anyhow, the number five becomes mystical in that Lucifer, whom you know became Satan, Lucifer was never a person, was never intended to be a person, was never anybody by the name Lucifer. Lucifer means bright star. Okay? And the reason the name is given Lucifer, the star, and the reason the star, because it has five points. Sight, taste, touch, smell, hearing, bright star. That means when your senses, your ego, are under control of the higher realm of God, then Lucifer. That means everything is under God's control. Fine. But when that star falls, remember Jesus said, I saw Satan fall from heaven like lightning, <coughs> the falling star. That means the five senses are now under the control of the ego. Sight, taste, touch, smell, and hearing are under your control. And we got the problems with sex, we got the problems with drugs, we got the problems with booze, we got the problems with our mouth, we got the problems with gossip, we got the problems with the things we see, we got all the problems with the things that we do. We are now in hell. Satan has arrived. That's what it means. Now, once this star fell, and once uh, the five senses come under the control of the ego, okay, and this is what it means, how then are the five senses returned back up into the higher realm? There must be the sacrifice of the five senses. You've got to give the five senses up. You do that by taking no thought. But let me show you how the Bible describes it. Jesus comes along, and what happens? He takes the five wounds, doesn't he? His hands to his feet two, and his side, bang, five wounds, and as soon as he takes that fifth wound, he becomes the Christ, he then ascends spiritually, and the five senses are returned to God. They fell with Lucifer to Satan, they return to the higher place with God. When the flesh is sacrificed, then the Christ consciousness ascends. That's exactly what the mission is for you. You see, all of this happened where? It happened in Golgotha. Golgotha means skull, which means it's consciousness. People say, oh, he doesn't believe it really happened. It doesn't make any difference. The point is, does it happen now? Does it happen for you? How can you make this? I mean, do you want to spend your life going and listening to preachers? Do you want to spend your life reading the Bible, half of which you can't relate to anyhow? Three quarters of which you can't relate to? Or do you want to now spend your life being a participant in God's universe and touching Him within you? That's the difference. If so, then the five wounds must be taken spiritually as Christ, rising with him into the higher consciousness above human thought, in the skull, Golgotha, okay? Let me show you how the five wounds are acted out in your body. It happens to everybody. Um, the, the whole message is the, the changing of the five, the five senses of the ego, into one, into a oneness with God, right? Okay, well, let me show you how this happens. When you're born, and you can ask any good chiropractor this, when you're born, you have 33 vertebrae. But between the age in one, of one and six, there are five vertebrae at the base of your spine area which fuse into one, and they become the foundation on which you stand. It happens. It happened to you. A miraculous thing happened, or not miraculous, that's a bad word, a natural thing happened 
to also show you, just as the sun in the sky does, what happens with Lucifer, what happens with Jesus, what happens with the five changing into one. Between the age of one and six, the five bottom vertebrae in your spine fuse together and become one. The five changes into one. And that becomes the foundation upon which you stand. And do you know what they call that place in your spine? The sacrum. You know what it means? It means the sacred place, the holy place. And the reason they call it the sacred place or the holy place is because the five has come into being one. And that becomes your foundation. That becomes the entire foundation of Scripture. That becomes the foundation of the fall of man when the five are taken over by the ego. becomes the foundation of the resurrection of man when the five are given back through meditation and you rise up into Christ consciousness. That's what it's about. That's what happens. That's what the whole Bible is about. And that's why you should have at least some understanding of numerology. We have that in the little dictionary that we send out, if you're interested in that, what the numbers mean. But you can't, you cannot look at the Bible and see these numbers. Every time you see the number seven in the Bible, you can know. It's just like John Wayne in the movies. As soon as you see the number seven, you know that God has intervened. You remember that Esau and Jacob were at each other's throats, and Jacob thought Esau was going to chop his head off. But you know how you're tipped off that God is going to intervene and it's going to be peace? It says in the Bible in Genesis 33 or 34, Jacob got off of his horse, walked towards Esau, and bowed seven times. Bingo! And then Esau came and hugged him. Right then, when he bowed seven times, you knew it was going to be fine because that number means divine intervention. Something from God is going to happen. I mean, Jesus expected his disciples to know that because Jesus uh, was, was talking to the disciples and they didn't understand what he was doing and Jesus said, wait a minute, fellas, let me ask you a question. When we fed the multitudes, how many scraps or how many basketfuls were left over? And Peter said, seven. 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 And Jesus looked at him in the Bible and says, and you still don't understand? Don't you understand? that when there is a divine intervention, this which is above the normal occurs. So you have to know numerology, and as soon as the first thing you'll know about it, in, those, in the numbers you'll know that these people that taught you the seven years of, of tribulation are nuts. It doesn't mean God sending seven years of trouble for anybody. It means in your trouble, he will intervene and get you out of it. Listen. We well, thanks.